Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And today I have a really awesome guest. Uh, this guy we met on Twitter and we're just big Venom fans. I saw him posting a lot about Venom. I think he probably saw me post a lot about Venom and our paths just kind of crossed. And he's got a great story to tell today. He's got a collection that's unbelievably awesome. So we're going to talk about all that today. I have Ryan here. Ryan, thanks for being on the show today. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. And real quick, where can people find you on social media? Like, what's your tags and stuff? Yeah, sure. I am at S-A-W-F-T-Y underscore. That's softy. That's a very old gamer tag. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I will put the link to that. Is that just on Twitter or is there an Instagram as yeah, well? Yeah, that's just on Twitter. Okay, awesome. And there, um, So I'll put that link down below, guys. If you guys want to follow him, please do. He posts a lot of really great stuff, and he's done some really great stuff for the Venom community recently, which I found out was kind of accidental and kind of not. So so we'll get into that in a little bit, but I want to kind of start at the beginning, the, the dark origins, if you will. Um, <laughs> I want to know... Great series, by the way, if you haven't read it. Yeah, hey, thank you. You're the first person I've had on that agrees with me on that. Um, <laughs> I love that. I'm a big Dark Origin fan. <laughs> That's Oh, man, well, we just became best friends. Um <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else, uh, just me. Um, sweet, awesome. Well, uh, so we'll get to that then. We'll talk about Dark Origin. But uh, you're, as far as you're collecting comics, like what originally, what comics brought you into it? And, and what around like how old were you? Like we kind of tell us like your beginnings of the comic book world. Yeah, sure. Um, so I've talked about it a few times, but I, um, I kind of have two real origins in comics. Uh, one was... Um, where my art started, uh, I, I got really into drawing as a kid. I just really enjoyed sitting down for hours with a pen and paper and drawing. And um, at, at, at one point at a used bookstore uh, where I used to live, um, I found these comics. Uh, they had just put them out on the shelves, and it was The Max and Spawn were brand new comics by Image. Um, and I was maybe six then. And of course, they were not suitable content for a six-year-old, but my mother, who was not paying attention and just looking at books, said, sure, no problem. So I started buying those because I would look at those images and start drawing off of them and getting new ideas and like drawing things based on the way those lines were. Um, I absolutely love Sam Keith's art, Todd McFarlane, and that's really kind of how I started in art. Um, and that was true through college. I really loved just taking anything they were doing and trying to make it my own. Um, but my love of actual comics uh, started with Age of Apocalypse uh, Alpha, number one. Um, that classic Wolverine, Sabretooth, Magneto cover with Apocalypse in the background. And uh, I found that. I was waiting at a pharmacy with my dad after a hospital visit, and they had it on the shelf. And it was, I think, you know, four ninety nine, which was obscene at the time. <laughs> I can't I, Something like that. And uh, so I picked that up, and uh, that's, man, it's been just straight downhill from there i have i have not stopped collecting x-men uh spider-man venom all, you know the whole spectrum of comics since then but so my 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 love of comics really comes from the uh spawn max and that little bit darker stuff um but i also kind of fell in love with the x-men accidentally and so I, that's really where my collecting came from i, I have very t had very two different very collection oh my gosh let me try that line again <laughs> i had two very different collections growing up one was that darker stuff that i really loved to draw and then the x-men stuff that i loved reading and that was really an inspiration for me um you know kind of looking at the things they dealt with and and trying to process that into my own life nice uh yeah you know it's so funny i i am too a big spawn fan um i love the max absolutely and sam <sighs> sam keith has done uh actually did a, a great uh, Wolverine versus Venom story at one point. Mm -hmm. um, I own them. Marvel presents Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And uh, that's uh, he's such a great artist. And then he recently uh, did a revisit to that story um, in a, a one shot, a Marvel one shot, uh, where he got to write a, kind of a spiritual sequel to it. Um, yes. Uh, what was that called? Yeah, you know I, can't, talking about I can't remember. I want to say it was like <laughs> uh, it was like Marvel Tales Wolverine or something. I can't remember. Yes, yes, Marvel Tales Wolverine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. When they came back to that. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was yeah, really good. I, I love Sam Keith's uh, Venom. That's one of my absolute favorite artists for Venom. There is. <laughs> Sweet. Yo, we're, we're definitely gonna sink our teeth on that then. So, um, <laughs> and then Age of Apocalypse is funny because the poster, the cover you mentioned, it's right next yeah. to me. It's hanging on my wall as we talk. <laughs> Um, I uh, I am a huge Age of Apocalypse fan. That is one of my favorite all-time comic books. And uh, yeah. 
I, I love, uh, and that's around the time, actually, I'm a little bit older than you, and I think, and I, those were my first comics I paid with with my own money from a job that I had. Um, that's awesome. So they're very near and dear to me, uh, that series. Yeah, memorable. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so you got into comics, you came in through artwork, which is awesome, because that's going to tie into something we're going to talk about here soon, too. Sure. But, um, you know, like, where? so over the years, like, you would go to college and stuff, do you collect monthly do you you know are you that kind of fan or do you just show up every once in a while and read a trade like i'm kind of curious what your uh buying processes and reading process for comics are sure sure so uh comics were very fluid for me in my life so um from when i bought that first comic um i think i was six is that 92 that that came out uh, for which one up uh spawn uh, so, uh uh for spawn yeah, yeah was it 92. 91 or 92 yeah 92 yes so I moved seven times between then and high school. Oh, yeah. Um, so hauling stuff around like that was just never something that that was, you know, going to happen. And so my comic collection uh, often found itself unwittingly in a garage sale before we would move. Uh. Um, so unfortunately, I, I would lose a lot of that stuff uh, as we would go pretty much everything but the Max. That was the stuff that I kept, you know, pretty close to my heart. And, oh, man, those things were so worn out. But I couldn't care less. I just wanted to read them again. Um so my comic collecting really, I never felt like the, you know, the kid that has all these comics now. It's like I've met a few kids at the comic store that have a big collection. I, I just never had that opportunity. Um, and then going into college, I went to a two-year college straight out of high school or as part of my high school and then went to, did my other two years uh, straight across the state in Minnesota. Um, and so again, I, I moved again. I just never felt like I had time. But when I came back home after college I started collecting again so maybe I'm 22 at that point so okay. that's when I start developing you know the long boxes again that's where I'm going every week to new comic book day and that's where that becomes a thing to me um I kind of forgot about that if that makes sense like yeah. during where life was crazy there I forgot how much that meant to me and so yeah new comic book day started probably my early 20s again and now I'm 34 so it's been 12 solid years of new comic book days <laughs> Hey, that's awesome. And uh, so around that time, 22, uh, I'm guessing like Batman Hush was probably starting to come out. Um, yeah. Oh, man, there were some amazing things coming out, though. <laughs> I didn't understand that they were amazing until however long later. Sure, you know, sure. I'm just reading reading them going, oh, that was a good comic. You know, <laughs> you, you don't understand how good the things are until um, you've already passed that time. But, yeah, that's uh, there was a lot of amazing stuff that came out. Um, oh, sorry, I'm uh, – it's the Alex Ross series. Um, oh, you talking about the big print ones? Um, I know the, uh, the ser- uh, Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come. Oh yeah. DC's yeah. Kingdom Come was one of the big series I remember um, that kind of captured my interest, and that that kind of became something I, I would go out of the way to pick up and find where, whenever I could. Uh, Kingdom Come was definitely a it's one of those comics that you can remember how like it kind of changed your life you open that and you're like what is this um and you have to read more and every every time you read one you cannot wait till the next one um that was that was one of those comic series that it kept me into comics um i don't know that there are a lot of series like that these days um sure but that was one of that i remember that grabbed me and I, i knew i loved comics again Alex Ross has that effect on so many people. Where oh, absolutely, I, I used to have this thing where every year I go to San Diego Comic Con, and as a professional, once I started getting professional badges and writing and working mm-hmm. in comics, and they would always give you a free comp badge. You could bring one guest, and mm-hmm. every year my goal was to bring someone who had never been. Oh, that's awesome! And every year we would walk by Alex Ross's booth, and someone would just go, "Whoa." <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, that guy draws comics. They're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, every page looks like that. They're like, what? Like, yeah. Yep. The guy is amazing. Every page, every cover he does feels like it is a work of art that deserves to be framed and put on somebody's wall. It really does. Uh, it's like, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I got into collecting every, like all the Captain America covers he did recently. Before that, it was all the amazing Spider-Man covers he was doing. And the truth was is that I, I don't even remember if I was reading those series, but it was I felt like this is a, a you know four dollar piece of art, and I was so happy to own it for that for that little amount of, of money. 
Yeah, his art actually pulled me into a series called uh, uh, Justice Society of America mm -hmm. in, oh, the, in the early 2000s. Yes. Yeah, and, yes. and that's how I discovered like uh, Jeff Johns because I was like, who's yep. this? I was like, wow, the art on the cover is Alex Ross, but wow, the inside's so amazing. <laughs> like, I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Um, there were a lot of characters in that that I, I didn't know until that series. Oh, yeah. um, I, I grew up as Image and Marvel, and most of my collecting was Image and Marvel. Um, but DC, uh, with books like that, really came kind of hit me. It's like these characters are actually really interesting. You know, why am I not reading this? But yeah, the because of covers like Alex Alex Ross's covers, those pulled you into books you might otherwise never picked up. Yeah, no, absolutely, and that's and I think that's why they put them on the cover <laughs> which makes sense exactly yeah it's very smart to do good yeah. business yeah um i know he's been doing spider-man covers which is always amazing to watch him draw spider-man or fantastic four but <laughs> yep. it would be it would be crazy to see him do a squirrel girl cover <laughs> i would have <laughs> i'd have to buy squirrel girl <laughs> that would be great I, i'll buy pretty much any alex ross art <laughs> absolutely so like uh so being a fan of art and stuff that actually leads us to something that has been kind of fun you've been doing recently so about you know a couple maybe a couple months ago now when the pandemic and by the way people listening to this if you're listening to this in the future during this time period uh, a lot of people are stuck at home not able to work because of a, uh, a virus that has been spreading around and so at the beginning of that comic book stores were closing down artists were out of work a lot of artists were told to you know to kind of chill out and wait for new assignments to come in and Donnie was trying to help out uh, to fans to stores you know uh, Donnie Cates who writes Venom. Apologize, I just lost audio Oh, for me? Can you hear me? Yep, there we go. You're back. I apologize. Oh, okay, so I good. lost audio there. That's all right. All right, here we go. I'll, I'll go back up. Um, yep. So, yeah, recently Donny Cates, who's he's the writer of Venom, and he's you know writing Thor and all these other books, like he decided he was going to try to help out comic shops by, you know, like one in particular in Texas where he's from, where he bought um, everyone's pull list. He paid for all their books. And then he started uh, commissioning people. And then you kind of took a cue from that, and I'm kind of curious, as someone who's a fan, what kind of what spoke to you about what he was doing that made you want to get involved, and how did your initial involvement turn into what it's become now? Sure. So um, when when Donnie did that, um, he and his wife have been uh, very good to the community. I see a, a lot of the things that they do, which is very cool and I you know I wish I had the financial backing to do some of the things that they're able to do um, and and my initial reaction was hey that's really cool I wonder if there's someone out there who would want to do a venom piece for me um, <laughs> that turned into something much bigger um, when I woke up the next morning and I had 55 messages uh, requesting commissions <sighs> and that was I don't know nine hours later um, it, it, what I, I found out that day was that uh, I believe it was Comic Book Resources uh, put an article out as well about Donnie and myself offering to do commissions as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> it exploded, I think is the only real way to say it. So uh, one of the really cool things that happened, though, is I actually um, I developed this line of text. And, you know, I'd have an artist email and say, what is it that you're looking for? And I said, all I would say is I want Venom as you see Venom. Okay. I, I don't I don't want you to draw X Venom, Y Venom, because I get a lot of them going, well, what exactly are you looking for? You know, what kind of style? And so because I did that, I got some really weird, strange things I never thought I'd see that I absolutely love. Um, one of the things I learned in this process is that if I, you know, opened up an artist's art piece and I went, what the heck is that? And I, I'd take me a minute to understand what they were doing, and I kind of would fall in love with it. Because um, it, it was cool, so cool to see something I had never seen before. Uh, one of the pieces of Venom that I absolutely love the most is that if you draw Venom, I draw Venom, and Ryan Stegman draws Venom, they might look completely different, right? They're totally uh, different size, scope. You know, it, the, the things people do with his mouth and his tongue and the teeth. And it, he's drawn so many different ways over the years that he really has this uh, really individuality to him. And so that's what I asked the artist to put into them. And boy, I, I was just blown away um, with the different styles that I got back. You know, a lot of people, um, 
saw that and they think, okay, cool. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll draw a black venom and I'll put them in a cool pose. And that was great. Honestly, I, I have quite a few of those and I, I really do enjoy them. But some people um, decided that they were going to go all out, you know, colors <laughs> just to the max and do something that was totally original to them. And I did get some feedback afterwards saying thank you for doing that because that was an exercise for them on right. something they never would have done before. And they got to do something very different, very very outside their box, and so they now have that as part of their portfolio. So I apologize for getting ahead there. That was just kind of a <laughs> no. big, uh, large scope version of what happened. No, that's great. I mean, uh, yeah, for the gra- to understand the gravity of this guy is like he – Donnie Cates put out that he was, you know, hiring artists and he's like, I'll pay you to do a commission for me. And then you got wrapped up in that. And like you said, it was kind of ac- accidental that it exploded the way it did because you were thinking of getting maybe one or two drawings. And then you ended up, you know, f- uh, helping a lot of artists during a really tough time, which is, you know, I'm sure everyone is very grateful for. And me as just a Venom fan and a, a fan of art, I'm grateful to you for for doing that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you on the show is because... I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a very selfless thing that you did. and, and the, But in a way, I mean, of course you get something back. It's like you're going to get a cool piece of Venom exactly. art. Exactly. Yeah, so it's it's, exactly. a, it's a great exchange of goods and, and services. But, it's, uh, <laughs> but during a time where people are, are hurting for that, and actually... I don't know if you knew this, but I took inspiration from what you and Donnie did, and I reached out to two artists that I knew that um, I saw they weren't get, like they, you know, like they're in the beginning as as artists, right? And I said, mm-hmm. you know, how about I pay you guys to create some channel art for my channel? Um, oh, that's awesome! And so the one drawing of me as Venom with all the little Venom heads coming out of me—that mm-hmm. was a girl named Kiana. And then a guy named John Selinger drew the things that I use as my emoji logos uh, with me as Venom, oh, that's me as Crunch. Yeah, so it was it was really great. And because you guys did that, I'm like, well, I don't have a ton of money, but I have like, you know, 140 bucks, and I can split it between these two artists, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and it, it was awesome. And and I and I so I thank you guys for that, and and thanks for you know getting me to get off my lazy butt and help people during a tough time, <laughs> and and do what I could. And then I saw other people doing it too. So. And then I even had like what well, you were really great because you would post the artwork, and then over time, because this is kind of around the time we met on Twitter and and you know mm-hmm. uh, reaching out to each other, and uh, and it was cool because I'm like wow this guy I don't know you from my show Venom vlog I just know you from our mutual post of Venom on Twitter, mm-hmm. and I, I love that and so like when I started seeing your stuff I was like you started tagging me because I pointed out yeah yeah there was you know and this is I'm not going to mention the person's name because this is not about you know uh, you know uh, yeah. hurting anybody or anything but there was an artist that was like uh, turned in a drawing and I said wow that and normally I'm I'm not that great with remembering <laughs> visuals but this particular yeah. drawing uh, you you po- posted it and I said hey that's weird I have that same picture on my wall <laughs> and so so I took a picture of it and I said wow that looks a lot like this was this your inspiration and little did I know that it was pretty much just like you know just a, a read a, t- a slightly touched up version of it and uh, but the cool thing was that artist did the right thing and they went and drew a really cool piece for you and ended yep. up giving you something awesome but then after that I just said hey dude tag me in every post <laughs> and uh, that yeah. way that way I can just look around at all the posters in my room and tell you if I've seen it before <laughs> Um, and I definitely appreciated that. That was nice to have a resource. Yeah, no problem. And uh, and I, now I'm going to be tagging you in post because pretty soon you're going to have sixty. <laughs> to you're going to have sixty <laughs> drawings of venom around your room. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's that's the real challenge now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you gotta you gotta go add walls to your house. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I I would love to have more walls. That's for sure. <laughs> Now, let's... Well, I was I was really impressed by the amount of people that I worked with um, over over that time period that have almost no issues. You know, it, when you think about what's happening there, it could have led to um, people trying to scam you, right? You, you know, because he, here's the truth: when when that happened, um, and I and I woke up that next morning. And I looked at it, and I just had this very emotional reaction to this many people saw it that soon, and most of them, most of them that wrote wrote a very emotional letter along with it before they even gave me any information about about uh, their art. Yeah. Um, just a, a thank you for <laughs> what I was inadvertently doing, <laughs> um, and so that was. It was hard for me to, 
to first of all go yeah i'm sorry i'm not interested because <laughs> that wasn't going to happen right. but with just that amount and and it kept growing as as throughout that day but my reaction was great whatever it is i'll do it and so that was good but it also left me open for a, a lot of opportunity um for people to take advantage sure. and we had one that tried um but like you said in the end they did the right thing and they did a gr- really great piece of art that i that i enjoy um we've had a few people that are <laughs> I, I have a lot of artists friends and one of the things that i've learned about artists is um uh, and it's not it's not at all all of them but there are a few of my friends that are yep no problem i'll have this done for you next week <laughs> sounds great i look forward to it well, three months later it comes along. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, I totally meant to be doing that for you. Sorry, I just I was like in this creative spot, and let, I'll get I'll work on that for you. Don't worry, right? And so I try to be very open and lenient with all that. Um, but so the, but, but there's been so much opportunity, and really no one has has been any problem except for that one. And so I'm actually really impressed by the artist community, just how genuine and, and most if. Yeah, I would say most of them immediately said, here's what I normally do, but since you're doing this, let's do this instead. Cool. Um, to, and, and my answer was just, hey, the more to help, the better, right? The more people we can reach, the better. Um, so people were very flexible, and overall, I was really impressed with them. That's awesome to hear. And, and that's been a lot of my experience, too, of course, like you said. When you open yourself up that much, you're like, all right, this is how many commissions I'm doing. You're like, all right, this there might be someone out there who, whether they mean to or not, might end up hurting me on this. And I'm yep, so glad. Exactly. I'm so glad that you have pretty much a, a, a straight record of like a royal flush there of, of awesomeness. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, so good. Yeah, that's good. And so, uh, how many more are you waiting for to come in? You know what? Let me find that information out for you. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Well, in the meantime, I'll tell you a story while you're looking for that. Um, Go ahead. I, yeah. uh, my first time to New York Comic Con, I think it was like in 2007 or eight, and um, I was up there with a small publishing company I was working for, and my friend Mark Poulton, he was um, he had gotten me one of my first writing gigs, so I, I really try to stick with that guy anytime I had a chance to. And he, uh, he was talking about this commission that he hired. He was a big Rob Liefeld fan. Like uh, uh, Mar- Mark loves Rob Liefeld, and so he was like, "Yeah, I, I I hired Mark to do a commission for me, and maybe I should go check on him and see if it's ready." And I go, "I was like, oh man, how long have you been waiting for the commission?" He goes, uh, three years." <laughs> and I I was like, three years?" I was like, "Oh man!" I go, "Yeah, you better go talk to him." And and uh, and he did. He went over and he said, "Hey, you know," I, I, he's like, "I don't even know if you have a record of my payment from that back then, but luckily Mark kept a record of it." And, uh, and so he's like, I never got that drawing. And so Rob, the cool thing, I got to give Rob credit. Rob was like, dude, I'm so sorry. And I think a week after that convention, he got that drawing sent right to Mark. Wow. Um, and then he, he actually awesome. he actually added stuff to it. So like whatever Mark paid for is like a full body shot of, you know, a certain character. I think uh, Mark, yeah. I think uh, uh, Rob actually added to the drawing and added more stuff. Yeah. So that's yeah, awesome. That was cool of him. Yeah. And so it's, it's good to hear that. I know people rag on me even me sometimes are critical of rob liefeld but uh, from what i've seen how he experiences with his fans and stuff he's a really nice guy that's great yeah um so yeah so how many drawings you uh, about roughly i think about five we're waiting on still okay that's um, not bad and a few of those to be fair were um a, g- a good friend of mine uh who has done a, a lot of commissioning themselves um i'll get there uh it's at Carol Collector on Twitter, okay. uh, they are a collector of Carol Danvers. Um, a- after all this happened, um, they said, "You know, I-, I have some other artists that that you should look into because they could use the help too." Okay. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it led to really great communication, and so those were a little bit later down the line. So a few of those that I'm waiting on are um, not part of that original group. Okay. So, um, so it's actually. A really good percentage, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're. That's great. That's and it's so great to hear all those guys out there and girls that are doing these pieces for you are de- dedicating that time and effort into it and getting to them to you as fast as they can. Um, and seeing you now yeah, only most five of away, them made it the priority and had it done within a week. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that's that's great. I, I'll never underestimate the power of that because, like, my first comic <laughs> book I ever did was. Um, 
I asked, I was going around trying to make a comic for uh, brain aneurysm awareness. And, uh, oh, okay. and I actually went to artist alleys at every convention I went to and I would email people and, and write them on Facebook uh, back when I had Facebook. And we actually got um, 150 artists and each of them drew one page of the story each. And wow. we, we made a full graphic novel. That's amazing. And it took us about a year to make it, but um, but sure. most most people when I, because we did them by like sections, so it'd be like all right, the first 20, mm -hmm. 20 pages, let's get these twenty artists, and then we did it. So then we had boom, here's issue one basically. Let's go to the next twenty, and we just <laughs> we just kept going, and it was uh, it was so amazing. So I understand the kindness of, of artists and people, and and uh, it's it's unbelievable. And it, it that made me cry. I think I cried for like like a week straight. I, <laughs> I was so blown away because we even had uh, yeah. people like Kevin Eastman do covers and um, and stuff wow. like that. Yeah, so it was like it's yeah, just amazing. So um, with that, so like you know, earlier we were joking about how you need more walls to put all this amazing artwork on, <laughs> but it's not just artwork that you have of Venom. You actually even just today, and actually people can see it when they're if they're watching the YouTube video, um, they can see your collection. You have a quite an amazing Venom collection in general. Uh, how did that start, and when did it get this out of control where it's this awesome? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so um, my my favorite piece is uh, so my sorry for a little backstory. My aunt and uncle are from Minnesota, um, and before my aunt passed, they moved to California and became actors and actresses, and and did pretty well. But one of the things that they used to do is they would because we're back in Minnesota, do some nice things for us every now and then. And one of the pieces I have is uh, from the 1992 Comic Con. A um, it is a Spider-Man 300 mm -hmm. signed by Todd McFarlane print. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and so that got sent to me. And so that's kind of the impetus for a lot of my love, like real love of Venom. <laughs> um, that was a snowflake and, that started the avalanche, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a good way to put it. Um, but then I, um, so I go. I shop. Sorry, it's not a it's not an ad, but I shop at the Source Comic and Games in uh, Roseville, which is like near Minneapolis, St. Paul, and here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And they have um, taken advantage of my love of Venom <laughs> to make sure that whenever anything Venom comes out, whether it be comic figure, etc., I I am the first to uh, have it. And um, of course, my Minnesota guilt makes sure I buy that <laughs> as well. Uh, <laughs> So I, uh, my, my wife and I, my wife has been so amazing in helping me collect stuff. We waited in line for about an hour, hour and a half at the Mall of America uh, because there's a store in their box lunch that did a anti-venom exclusive. Right. Um, right. So, you know, having someone who is very supportive of my collecting and, you know, when she sees new stuff coming out, she always sends me a text message of the of the items that are coming or tells me where I can go pre-order them or, you know, where we have to go stand in line or whatever. Having that has been a, a huge help. Um, but I think, you know, what, once I found the Venom site um, and their Discord and saw other people's collections, it was kind of like my mind understood how much was really out there right. and how much stuff I, I, you know, which fell in love with. And now anytime anything comes out, I want that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's weird because it's, you're right. It is like just an absolute snowball though. Um, I found the, the original Venom Funko Pop, uh, which is from a Walgreens exclusive, which is so hard to find uh, anything Walgreens exclusive, unfortunately. But, you know, once I had that and then I think the carnage was next, it was like I had to have them all as they came out. And every time that a new set has been released, we've hunted them all down. I watched my wife in front of uh, a person at Target dig out their entire Funko section to find me the Venomized Loki. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the mini it's, one? What's that? The, the mini mystery box one? No, there is an actual uh, Target exclusive Venomized Loki Funko. Yeah. Um, oh, and wow. when we went to our target the morning of that it was supposed to release, they told us, "Oh, we decided to release them all last night. Ooh. They're all sold out." And we went, "What? <laughs> well, how were you notifying people?" Oh, well, just when people came in, you know, we put them out. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife, being my wife, dug out the entire section and found one that somebody had stashed in the back. We assume an employee uh, so that they could purchase later. Uh, so sorry to that employee, but <laughs> my wife is ferocious. Um, 
So, but honestly, like all of these are just memories to me, you know, where we got them, when we got them, you know, the pain that it was, or, you know, some of them were, were pretty easy, but some of them were a lot of work to find. Um, one of my favorites is the, um, Venomized Black Panther, okay. which is a GameStop exclusive. Um, and they had one left in the state of Minnesota. It was in uh, the town where my wife grew up. So when we, we went up there and we went to the GameStop, it was in stock. And they said, oh, sorry, we set that aside for somebody else. They have, you know, the next three days to claim it. Oh. <laughs> but they kept it in their website inventory. Right. And the person I talked to had no idea. So I ended up having to track one down in Canada. Oh, my God. <laughs> so goodness. I have the EB Games exclusive. Right. Exactly. So they're, they're all just memories. Um, and so... You know, when you're collecting the Funkos, you start, you know, I saw a statue come in. I'm like, oh, well, I probably ha- should have that statue, right? And so it, it it went from this little box of my collection to most of my collection. Um, and then that all exploded when Marvel put their full force behind the Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman Venom. Uh, when that started to come out and it felt like it... <laughs> It felt like for, I mean, you know, the, the truth is that they, they did the similar thing with um, Rick Remender's uh, Venom run, right. um, except that was an agent Venom. That was like, I've never have felt like the monster Venom has been like their feature comic. There's been a lot of little side stories and stuff that have been fun, but this felt like a feature Marvel comic. And it kind of reignited my, my love. And so I started chasing things down and that uh, I know that's a point of contention between us but uh, that was definitely an impetus for my collection to take like another step in there honestly there's still so much stuff out there I'd love to own one day but the problem is I don't know where I'd put it right yeah I, uh, <laughs> I, I just got a new apartment and I thought oh this is gonna be great I'll, I'll have enough venom stuff for my room and then I can do the living room <laughs> something else and and the living room is DC related but I have so much venom stuff that I could technically get rid of all my DC stuff and make a venom living room too um, so which you of course should do. Which I I know, but then after that I'm gonna have to get rid of my transformers, and I don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 tough, and uh, but I, I know what that is. I know what that's like for the the you know the snowball uh, to become the avalanche. Yeah. And it's uh it's great. And no, I know. Yeah, you know, let's talk about that for a minute because since you mentioned it, and sure. also I do want a, a little clarification on one thing. You uh earlier I think you said something about Minnesota guilt. Um, is that yeah. is that any different from Catholic guilt? Very similar. <laughs> okay, all right. Then I know exactly there, there what you're is talking that, about. That guilt where if I walk into a store and you know, especially one of my local comic book stores, they said, "Hey, we found this and put it aside for you." And even if I don't really want it, I'm going to buy it because they took the time to put it aside for me. And now there's another customer that could have come in that would have bought it, but it was set aside for me. So my guilt is immediate uh, in telling me that I need to own that, even if I don't need to own that. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I did that the other day uh, for, for Catholic guilt reasons, but it sounds the exact same. Um, I went to the comic store here in Orlando that I'm now shopping at, and mm-hmm. they, they were nice. and like I asked them to pull a book for me. They did, but they didn't have the cover I wanted, but they didn't tell me, oh. they didn't tell me that until I got there. Um, and, then, yep. and then they pulled a, um, a retailer exclusive one per store, Venom number 25. Nice. And yep. they were like, hey, we'll sell you both of these. And I go, all right, well, it's a it's a cover I don't want, and it's a book I don't like. <laughs> and I'm like, so I said, you know what? I, I said, well, I feel bad because there's nothing else in here I want. Yep. I came here for these today or for something today. And I said, all right. And, and it's tough. Like, I'm running out of money, you know, because I don't yeah. – actually, I, about it. I don't have a job, and I'm not on unemployment. So it's like uh, – it's I've been living oh, – wow. Yeah, I've been living off of my 401K. Um and it's it's going to be running out soon. Um, yeah. So um, I mean, I got a few dollars in from te- I was on temp disability for a while, but that's ending this week. So. Um, oh okay. So, you know, so I have to be frugal with my money, but I still did it because I was like, well, and then I figured, well, I can, you know what? I'm not a Donny Cates Venom fan, but someone is, and I'm going to do a giveaway <laughs> for the book. You know, so there you go. Yeah, so there you go. It, it works out. You know, we'll spread the love. So. <laughs> So let's let's talk about that for just a, a couple minutes here. Um, mm-hmm. The Donny Cates thing, because I have had people on who you know who do disagree with me, and, and then some who do uh, surprisingly agree with me too. Um, 
But I like hearing that. I like, you know, everyone knows how yeah. I feel if they watch my Venom vlog show. They know how I feel about Donnie's uh, stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't have anything personal against the guy, and that's why I like the book is selling. Because to me, yeah. as long as Venom is succeeding, that's good for me as a Venom content creator. Yeah. So, so I'm happy about that. So what is it about the books that you're liking so much, and what are you looking forward to coming up from Donnie's run? Sure. So um, part of it for me is how I read comic books. Um, one of the things that I found pretty early on is different for me from how my friends read comics. You know, I, I have a friend read X-Men. I like Hickman's new one, and he goes, this is bad. It doesn't buy it anymore. <laughs> um, right? And so... Um, Can you give me your friend's number? I, I think me and him might agree on I, a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, here's the worst part. He works for Marvel. <laughs> uh, well, that doesn't surprise me, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for I, I've, I've never read comics like that. Um, I, if the art is, is easy enough for my eyes to read, hmm. um, you know, an enjoyable art, uh, like I find Ryan, Ryan Segman's art very enjoyable and, and many others that have been on these books, I have always read a comic book as that's this person's telling of the book. And I've never felt like this person is wrong. That's not how it should be told. I, I have I have plenty of friends that are that way, but I've never connected to a character being and, and thought that way. Like, no, this is wrong. And my it's always been this is their perspective on the book. Right. Um, so I've never stopped reading a Venom run. Like, so a great example is when Rick Remender had the Agent Venom Flash Thompson run um, after two full series uh, there's two complete collections um, which are things like four trades Colin Bunn took over right and, and a lot of people um, you know loved what Rick was doing and dropped off uh, even though Colin Bunn I think is an excellent writer um, and I my the way I took it was this is Colin telling me a story you know why would I not want to hear what his story is so i've never i've never been a person like hey they have to tell my superman oh my gosh when the new 52 happened and all that i heard so many people talk this isn't my batman or this isn't my you know all right. those things you hear in the comic shops i've never i've just never been that way about comics uh when i read a flash and i go this isn't my flash i go oh that's a different way to look at flash um so i've just never been that type of person so i'm very I'm the perfect mark for Marvel and DC because I just accept what they're telling me is that that storyteller's uh, version of it. Obviously, I connect with some more than others. Um, but what I was saying earlier that I like about Donnie's run is it feels like this is a marquee Marvel book. It's doing very well. It feels like it has the power of, of Marvel behind it in a way that I've never felt that way about Venom. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I could tell uh, when Lethal Protector came out and, and they started doing all those mini series after mini series. I at one time I tried to collect every single Venom appearance in every comic issue ever and got very close. Uh, and then I went, why am I doing this? <laughs> but so I, I was reading through all of those again and remembering is like, boy, I felt like just maybe this time Marvel's going to put their weight behind him and have a, a real series. And to their credit, the series that they have had, they, they have had longer runs. But if you look at it, Venom's had four volumes um, since the 90s and some characters have had like seven or eight. Right. It just never felt like they, they were their full, you know, the full weight of Marvel behind them. And for the first time, you know, I walk into my comic shop day one, there's Venom with, let's just say, 30 variants to round it up, right? <laughs> right. There's Venom posters at my stores. There's some uh, uh, Venom uh, movie stuff is coming out. There's the Venom Marvel selects. Like, this is a big deal for my store. This is a big selling point. And I finally felt like my character is is the big selling point of Marvel. Never felt like that before. And so for me, I immediately connected with, I cannot wait to read this, right? Right. Um, I'm also a big fan of Wolverine and Thor, Captain Marvel, but I've many times felt like, hey, this is their feature. This is so cool to read my book. That's, that's their feature. But I've never felt that way about Venom, so I really connected with that right away. And then when, um, I don't know if you remember, but for a little while, Ryan Stegman, maybe in the second or third arc, came off the book. Yes, yeah. And, and a lot of people said, what's going on? Where is Ryan Stegman? Uh, why did you, you know, kick him off the book? I think a lot of people said, and Donnie just replied, said, I did not kick Ryan off. He's working on our next Marvel event, which is all about Venom. And I went, wait a second. 
the next Marvel event is about my character. I'm getting goosebumps right now telling you this. <laughs> this is about my character. They're actually going to do an event around Venom. And I was so enthralled that, like, my character was a thing happening in Marvel. Right. Absolute carnage. I loved it. I bought every single book. I own all the trades. <laughs> you know, I, I am totally uh, swept up in, in this Venom run. Like I said, because it feels so important. I understand that some people may not like Donnie Cates uh, politically or what he talks about on, on social media, yeah. but I absolutely love his Venom. I also really like his Thor. Um, so, yeah, it, and, I, and his Guardians of the Galaxy as well. That, I really get into that. But so I, it's, for me, I, I have a lot less good writer, bad writer in my head, and I have a lot more this is their story that they're telling me mm-hmm. and in the end we'll see if I enjoy it but I'm, I'm along for the ride no matter who it is yeah for me I like because um, I was a little iffy on um, Mike Costa when he jumped on Venom oh and, yeah and yeah, Mike, yeah that was an interesting Venom run yeah it was it, it was rocky at first and I was kind of trying to stick with it and I found myself like losing interest but I, I stuck till the end and I'm glad I did because I, I actually liked how it ended and uh, and I and I really liked first host. I thought that was an interesting story, and I was like, all right, yeah, th- yeah this is cool stuff. And I'm like, all right. And then at that time, I was a big Donnie fan because I liked Thanos wins, and and I kind of like yeah. p- parts of Damnation, some of it. But the, my sure. it, so my my thing is obviously is like the reason why I, I kind of rail against his stuff is the reason I rail against everyone's stuff. I'm a former comic writer and editor, and I can only read things, and cr- and and be critical of it. Um, so that's that, and that's not and you know and I tell people that I go look on my show I go look these are my opinions based off what I know yeah. from how you should structure things and how you should do things yep. now granted you can break those rules anytime you want um, but you gotta for me as someone who's uh, who fo- had to follow those rules for years and years it has to really captivate me if you're going to break them. And so, like, that's kind of right. where I come with Donnie. Like, I think Donnie has great ideas, but me, if you notice, if you go back and watch some of my reviews, I'm normally commenting on the pacing or, you know, yep. things like that. It's not really about the story, because I actually agree with you. I think this version of Venom that he's writing is pretty much the version of Venom I've always known and liked. Uh, so it's, it, he doesn't feel like that much of a departure. Um, you yeah. know, he doesn't feel like a departure really at all, Eddie Brock himself. Um so it's just the things around it, and it's the structure. But um, but that's why I like hearing other people's opinions, and it's so refreshing actually to hear because I've for years working in, in comics, I got detached from some in some ways talking to fans. That sometimes mm-hmm. happens, uh, unfortunately, and the only time you get exposure to them is at cons. Um, and so that's why it's so refreshing to hear you say. I don't care who's writing it. And like you, I don't care about anyone's personal uh, feelings on anything. I, that doesn't factor exactly. in. Exactly. That, that doesn't, doesn't factor way in. into my love of comics. Yeah. No. There's no. If I did, I wouldn't enjoy anything. Um, exactly. Right. Well said. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, with with stuff, it's like it, hearing you say, like, I just love it and I'm here for the ride. I mean, dude, you you, you hit me right in the heart, man. And it's like <laughs> hearing, hearing someone say that is just the most genuine and honest and, and fulfilling thing anyone working in comics um, could hear. So uh, you know, so please keep telling Donnie that and tell everyone that that you just love what they're doing and and everyone out there who you know who does disagree with me, send love to Donnie, man. Like like and I I saw unfortunately yeah. he's going through a really rough patch right now. I saw. Yep. Um and and I my heart goes out to him. So you know Donnie, if you're listening, like you know I have one of your biggest fans here. Uh, you know, so yeah, hopefully you and Donnie could hook up one day and talk to each other and and uh, and get him to sign a couple of your books. I'm sure you'd love that. Yeah, I actually, um, it, it's kind of a funny story. I saw a uh, eBay a lot going, and it was like Ven- Venom first prints one, two, three, four, five, six. Which, if you know, that was like the first appearance of Null in there, and some of those yeah. got really expensive. Mm-hmm. And as a bonus, it had a nine point eight graded of number one. Oh. And I went what? So I, I, I hit the buy it now. It was like 40 bucks or something like that. And I bought it. It shipped. Everything was mint. I couldn't believe it. And so I had been waiting this whole time for a Donny Cates Ryan segment event, like the one that's coming up in June. Mm-hmm. And I was going to send it in, have them crack it, have them both sign it, regrade it, and send it back. And then this stuff kind of happened. And I went, oh, I don't have any money now. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> but uh, I do hope someday that to ha- – I mean, I do have um, – the free comic book day one uh, they did um uh it was i think we were in yeah we were in orlando at megacon 
Oh, cool. Um, they did a signing there of uh, when they had the Absolute Carnage free comic book day uh, number one, the, you know, the tie into the, the upcoming story. Right. Uh, so I have that, which I love, but I'd love to someday have my Venom number one to them, them too. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard because, um, yeah, I, I was listening to you on, on the show yesterday. And which I guess I should say uh, that was on June 6th, uh, oh, yeah. 2020, if you're right. listening in the future, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that talked about Donnie. And the, so uh, for those who don't know, the Eisner nominations came out and I reading what Donnie was saying is he was um, he was pretty upset about the people he works with not being nominated. Right. And if you talk to Donnie Cates, that man goes to bat for the people he works with like no one else. Like that guy loves the people he works with and will stand up for them. And it's so interesting because the, I read those tweets and I could, I could, A, I knew he was heartbroken right now and he was going through some stuff, but I could feel like the true love and anger over, you know, his people not being the ones that got nominated for the Eisner Awards. Sure. And so it was interesting listening to other people talk about you know quit whining just you know just leave it alone that's not the right tactic and i and i thought if i'm one of his people there's no one i want more as my writer than someone that's willing to go to social media and go to bat for me and tell everyone how amazing i was and that i should have been if i'm not going to be nominated at least i have that at my back sure uh, so yeah it's it's interesting because i, I think he, he is um, or he has become kind of a polarizing figure outside of his writing but more in social media and sometimes I do think that plays into you know what what they're writing I, um, I love comic cast uh, it's a YouTube podcast and there mm-hmm. are some people who I actually really like that just do not like Kate will not read Kate's right and he's and for some reason there's that polarizing piece of him that that some people just don't like and and like I said I just want to read his story okay. I just want you to tell me your story or stories um, who knows how long of a sick Go! I would love to see a Venom number one hundred come out of this. Um, well, you're gonna see for me. You're gonna see a Venom two hundred very soon. Yeah, the the legacy <laughs> numbering. Yeah. Which, um, if I'm honest, I, I do, I do think that uh, you know, you're talking about Mike Costa's run. Yeah. I think it was one through six. Yeah, and, and then, then it, and then it was issue one fifty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was one fifty through. 156 164 during, oh sorry yes yeah, sorry 164 <laughs> wow um but there was also a venom ink run in the middle of that and then an x-men blue venom in there right and it it felt um so disorienting disorienting to not only have a number change not only have a, a separate tie-in and then have another tie-in and then it ended, and then a, a mini comes out about it. it, it <laughs> so I, I think part of the thing that I loved about when Kate's came on is I felt like finally a linear path. <laughs> it just felt like it was kind of all over the place there for a minute. And I, I, I actually liked the stories. Yeah. That, that wasn't the issue. When I, so I have all of those now, and if I take them out and read them in order, I actually really enjoy them. Um, not that I'm taking them out of the mylars. I'm definitely reading them in the trades, but... Um, I think that was part of the problem for me on the coaster run is that it just felt uh, very scattered. Um, but yeah, I, I, I hear you about what you're saying with Donnie, and, and I don't even I don't even disagree. That's the thing is, if you and I read two books or the same book, right. and I say, boy, I really like this, and you say, boy, this is garbage, that doesn't mean you're wrong. I see that so much on social media. Oh, yeah, sure. Because no, no. you yeah. didn't like a book and I liked a book does not mean one of us was wrong and the other one was not right. A, not at all. There's right. so much headbutting over that. Yeah. It's just how we enjoy comics, yeah. So, no, I, I'm with you and I apologize for rambling, cause, but there's like, a lot to unwrap in that topic. No, and I, I get that. And that's why I let you go because I, I actually think it's a very interesting topic and to hear your perspective on it is really, really nice. And, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in one of those, like, I'm, I'm very, I try to be very professional. So, I will stick up for you know someone like like I did when I worked at Lego. I stuck up for someone who I thought was passed over for a promotion, and unfortunately that got me a lot of backlash from other people that mm-hmm. work there. Um, so Donnie sticking up for his writers, yeah. My comment was basically like, yeah, I don't know if that was you know what you should have done, only because I knew the backlash that comes with it. But obviously Donnie right. Cates on some level 
he doesn't care about that backlash. He knows that yep, speaking he's willing up, to take it. Yeah, he's like, hey, I'm taking it because these artists, they might feel like they can't say something, and I'm going to say Which something. Which I think is great. Again, right. that's the person I, I want. He knows that there could be repercussions, but he does it anyways. Yeah, he does it anyway. And, that's, and I don't think yep. that's – to me, that doesn't make him polarizing. To me, that makes him at least an honest uh, friend, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, with all this you know other stuff going on, like yeah, people disagreeing. It's like I, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. If if like if you love something, I want you to keep loving it. Um, and yeah. if, but if I don't like something, I the only time I get a defensive is when people try to convert me, and I'm like, hey, look. Oh yeah, you have to love the series. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, look. You know what? It's not for me. But you're you're allowed to enjoy it. It's cool. Um, yeah, exactly. Well said. You're allowed to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't let, and please, I tell people when I give my opinions, if I'm negative, even if you think I'm making sense, understand I'm reviewing this comic from an analytical standpoint. I'm not reviewing yes. it from someone who's just sitting and enjoying it. Because uh, if yep. I were, I would have way different things to say about the book. Um, I don't know that I could ever work in comics um, as much as I would love to, to be around it. Yeah. But I, I, I think you really kind of lose something when you go from being someone that just sit down, open a comic and enjoy it and, you know, get that smile on your face on new comic book day and you just can't wait to read it and you enjoy it for what it is. And that's really kind of how I do too, being analytical. Uh, I do project management work in my work and the first thing I do when I get something is I start to break it down. <laughs> I break it down and I find the faults and that is just, uh, I, there used to be a uh, Marvel series, was it Karnak? Yeah, Karnak. Marvel series about that he would just find the faults in things. Yes, yeah. Uh, Is it inhuman? And, and that's kind of how I feel I would be about comics if I, you know, if, if I worked in the industry. I mean, it can be that way. I mean, I'm I will definitely say that there are still books I'll read that when the story and the art and combination is good enough, I throw that stuff out the window. Um, cause sure. like, you know, people will be like, Oh, you, you liked this comic. And I'm like, I did. They're like, you're not going to be analytical on it. I'm like, I didn't feel the need to be, I actually just enjoyed yeah. it. And so luckily yep. I haven't fully lost it, but that's only cause I worked in comics for like eight years. So it wasn't like, you know, most of my life has been a fan. Um, sure. so I didn't get sucked in too much. I'm, and I'm thankful for that. Actually. I'm very thankful. Um, but dude, Ryan, I mean, this was so much fun, and I love hearing your perspective on things. I just love your passion. Like when I saw that on Thanks, tw- Twitter, that's what I was like. I don't know this guy that well, but I gotta have him on my <laughs> show for sure. And uh, and I'm I'm glad you made the time. It really means a lot to me that you came here to talk to me today. Well, thank you so much for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. And at some point, I'll, you know, when I'm circling back around, I'll have to try to get you on again, and we can maybe one issue. Because that was oh, that was what I wanted to mention was the 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 Marvel thing with the issue numbers. Like, yeah, I didn't like that either oh. during during the cost of stuff. And what's really funny is actually if you know this is where I don't like Marvel doing it too. Is technically we'd already be past issue 200 of Venom. Um, right. Be- because you would have because the reason they got to 150 was because they counted all those mini series, which technically mm-hmm. weren't ongoing series. Um, they right. counted one shots and everything. So it's weird that they stopped counting that stuff after Mike Costa's <laughs> run. So after Mike Costa, they didn't ca- they didn't count uh, first host. Uh, so that's not in the counting. Correct. Um, all the D- Donny Cates Web of Venom one shots aren't in the counting. But I feel like they would have been before. So it, yes, it's prior to yeah, yeah. So I feel like, but you know what? I think they have a plan. I'm guessing issue 200 is going to be the start of the end of the big Null story. And so that makes sense that they would want that to be a, a pivotal, probably $10 issue um, with 100 variant covers. And I wish you luck on <laughs> buying all of them. <laughs> um, and, you, yeah, you we'll, know, that's a, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic that you and I could have yeah. just talking about variants and numbering. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We'll do that next time you're around. After issue 200 comes out, I'll have you on again. We can discuss what, what's happened in the run from issue 25 up to then. That sounds great. Awesome, man. Well, hey, Ryan, thanks for your time. And everyone out there, make sure you follow Ryan on Twitter um, at a, uh, it's at S-A-W-F-T-Y underscore, right? That's correct, sir. Awesome. So that link is down below. Make sure you follow him. And uh, any last words, sir? No, thank you so much for having me. You have a great day, guys. Hey, you too, man. And everyone out there, uh, leave your comments down below. If you have any questions, obviously, I'll, I'll continue the conversation with you down in the comments section. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you in the future. Peace.